Nigel, transfer deadline day. Could you give us an insight as to what it was like for you and the club? Uh, very, very frustrating in the end. Uh, we chased a number of players uh, and then when we got down to the wire, uh, we got the OK on our what was pretty close to our number one target uh, as, as players were whittled down. Uh, and unfortunately, the plug got pulled on us, I think, five minutes before uh, the window closed last night, 10.55, which didn't give us any time uh, to get anybody else in. That was the disappointing thing. We weren't told by the other club it was uh, Dai Lang Jayasimi at uh, Charlton. And uh, he'd agreed. Uh, I'd spoken to the player twice. Uh, we sorted out he was going to take number 11. That's how everything was sorted. He was going to sign uh, remotely at Charlton and then come up and stay in a hotel and then be ready for training this morning. Uh, and then Charlton pulled the plug at uh, say 10.55 last night. We'd had another two sort of players. Uh, it, it worked out OK because the owners um, gave, us the, gave us the green light to go for for. Jai Simi and uh, he would have made him probably in our top few highest paid players at the club uh, on a loan as normal for the rest of the season with a break in January um, and then there was another couple that we were looking at as well which we could have brought in for the same price so we kept those two sort of going along juggling along until about nine o'clock when eventually everything said right yep yeah, we're all good to go paperwork's sort of signed and everything with Charlton uh, and then we sort of called off on the other two um, unfortunately, and, and then we get let down at the last minute. So you had no inkling whatsoever that they might pull it? No, none at all. Uh, once paperwork's been exchanged and you know, you're know you close to that, you're just looking, waiting for a final signature and everything. Uh, and I think a, uh, a signing fell down at their end. Uh, but we didn't know that it was dependent upon that. We thought it was all good to go ahead. Uh, and he was a player that we've liked for some time, been out of Swindon uh, on loan and done really well, uh, 24 years old. Um, just the sort of player that we were looking for. But uh, So we move on. The good thing is um, the squad that we've got is very, very good as it is. And uh, the players, the reaction since the Sutton defeat and the disappointment down there this week, you saw the reaction against Manchester City, which was our highest running stats of the season. Training's been excellent. Um, we've got 16, 17 lads absolutely busting a gut to start tomorrow. Just to wrap up on the transfer window, you, you had two as backups yes. then. Yeah, yeah, and we just sort of said yes, and we made it clear to them all along, listen, this is our number one target. If that goes ahead and we get the OK on that, um, then we're going to go with that one. And they were fine then, we're open about that, so they had the, then the opportunity with a few hours to go to get those players fixed up. And um, But you, there's not much you can do at 10.55. <laughs> so it's a, a little bit frustrating. Um, the only other uh, positives to it is the uh, list of free agents at the moment is quite extensive, uh, especially in the striker department. And we've talked about this before, where it used to be a little bit of a stigma if you weren't fixed up within the within the transfer window. Now it's almost a little bit of an advantage for players because nobody can sign anybody else. Uh, and there's, uh, so we're just having a look through there and seeing who might be, might not be uh, willing to come down. And we said all along, it's, it's, we just ideally want somebody for three months to come and uh, and to come and cover Reese Oates. You know, he's had his operation what, about oh, ten days ago now, uh, and he'll be back training and on the pitch before the end of November, uh, if all goes well. So, literally talking about somebody for two or three months. We might not even need them. I think everybody was very impressed with James Gale's performance uh, against Manchester City the other night. Uh, he's in the squad again tomorrow, uh, and whoever we bring in has to sort of be better than him which sounds strange because as a young lad you know from Long Eaton United but he's improving all the time Just a final word on Joya Simi if I may it sounded like a bit of a, a gambling night if you would because um, I suppose in retrospect the only thing you might have done was put a deadline on yeah. Charlton to say we must sign him by this point yeah. otherwise we're going to options B and C That's it that's, that's the one thing that we've discussed but when you have that, you usually do that when you have a little bit of an inclination that it might not be going but we've dealt with Charlton before over uh, laps uh, and everything was very straightforward and it was literally them losing the play at the last minute as well that we didn't know about so uh, but it's something we've discussed already this morning uh, right we will in future put it on uh, and we have done that before if we think there's a little bit uh, if there's a doubt that it might go ahead but myself was it and you saw with David and Simon and Matty and Gary and 
you know, when you speak to the player twice, yep, I'm coming up, you know, and everything. Uh, I don't think there's any reason to uh, to doubt it. And these things do go to the last sort of hour anyway, because clubs are doing other things. Uh, but that's certainly something we've discussed for the future. This isn't a question from me, but it's one I've seen a lot of. So I think it requires an explanatory, uh, well, an explanation, should I say. Um, and the question is, why does the club leave it to, quote unquote, the last minute? Well, because we didn't know the lad was available, uh, first of all, until a couple of days ago. Then we start negotiations straight away. Uh, then the lad had four or five other League Two clubs to decide between. Uh, so it was very much down to the player uh, yesterday. He said he, was, he didn't make the decision until early evening. So we can't do anything about that. Uh, he's a London lad. I would think ideally uh, he'd probably wanted to stay in London. He had a couple, quite a few League One clubs. Charlton said they didn't want him to go to uh, a competitor, which is completely understandable. Um, and then he didn't make that decision till early evening. So that's how it works. That's how the transfer deadline day is. Everybody's waiting for something a little bit better, either the player or the clubs or everything. Hence, it goes down to the last few hours. Uh, but I think we do generally, you see us do our business early in transfer windows, as early as we can. So it doesn't suit us and it doesn't, it doesn't sit right, but that's just the way that the, the market is. Could you look for a free agent now in the striking department? Yeah, we'll see how we go on at uh, Doncaster tomorrow and injury-wise as well. Um, you know, we've got a couple of sort of knocks, but they're only sort of two, three weeks jobs. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how we go on and then assess it. We've got a clear week leading up to the Bradford game. The only problem with the free agents generally are they haven't been training with people uh, so you need to spend two or three weeks uh, to getting them up to speed uh, but we're, we've we look through the list anyway uh, before but it's become uh, larger because people have been freed and, and paid up or whatever and become free agents in the last 24 hours so you know you, you can't guess who that's going to happen to so you just get the list as of today uh, and then we go through it from there. Theo Robinson was training with you last week. Yeah. Is he an option? Yeah, we uh, Theo came in and did a week or two's training. We're aware of Theo. That's the sort of player, that, and there's quite a few out there like Theo, generally experienced strikers uh, who are available. So, yeah, we just go through the list after Saturday. Well, t we started this morning, uh, but you haven't, you haven't got time to sign them before Doncaster. So we, we sit down in earnest and go through them next week. And there'll be lots of reasons, like we talked about, why, you know, it might be... The reason to become free agents is they might need to get back... Uh, to a certain area, location or whatever with family and things like that. It's not worked out at the club. They might be carrying injuries. Uh, so, so you have to vet the list quite carefully. On the whole, now the window's shut, are you happy with the balance of the squad? Oh, very. If, uh, if Reese hadn't got injured, then we wouldn't be you know, moving for anybody. And we, we sort of sat down at the start of the season and said, if this 19 outfield that we have, and we have James Gale and George Cooper, who are outside of it as young pros that were going out on loan, uh, then we'd be very happy. The, the difference is that we're not carrying anybody. We, we're happy to start anybody uh, within that squad. And you saw that the other night. I didn't realise we'd made eight changes from the Sutton game, but we did. Uh, and, and we had put a very, very good team on the pitch. And that's still with having two or three injuries as well. So uh, we've got a good squad intact. And I've read teams in our league have signed four or five or whatever. Well, they haven't had the, the squad intact that we got in the summer. We did sort of the Will Swan and, you know, and Riley Harbottle and we got Christy Pym in and Hiram in. And we, we knew from last season we didn't need nines and tens coming in. Uh, and we're very, very happy with what we've got. Uh, many people know the answer to this one, but I just want to get it from your mouth to, to close the door on it. You couldn't recall Danny Johnson from Walsall, even if you wanted to? No, no, no. Uh, January is the first time we could do that, no. And that's the other thing. People say, well, why did you let Danny go? Well, if anybody's got a crystal ball and knew that <laughs> Reese Oaks was going to rupture his peck or anything else, uh, then please, can you lend it to us? Because uh, no way would we have let Danny out. And, uh, you know, I was chatting with the chairman after the game the other night and the main reason we did it was we don't like players hanging around, but also, you know, Danny's a, a big earner with us and we don't want him sitting around on the fringes of things, maybe. From a selfish point of view as a manager, oh, we'll keep them all together and he sits in the stand, we might need him for a few games. I don't think that's good economics uh, for the club uh, and we, we don't want to waste money like that. Again, just for clarity, who do you see as your recognised strikers avail available to you? Well, the two are Will Swan and Lucas Aikens uh, and then we have Jordan Barry. We have... Uh, 
Ollie Hawkins, who uh, got another goal from up there last week. Uh, and we have George Lapsley who can play up there as well. So, or just off sort of thing. George Maris has done that playing just off as well. Uh, and we have James Gale, uh, the young lad as well. So we're, n- we're not without strikers, that's the thing. And you, you saw that on Tuesday night. Uh, we're not without options to put a good team on the pitch.